Let's move on to the uh, virtual owners meeting, which took place on Tuesday. Of course, lots of looking at coaching hires uh, about the Rooney rule, updating the Rooney rule. Here's what came uh, out of that virtual meeting. So the decision uh, to table the conversation about draft picks being given for teams who uh, promote minority hirings, that's been tabled for now. But here's what they came out of uh, with this. All clubs will now be required to interview at least two minority candidates from outside the organization for head coach vacancies, at least one minority candidate for the coordinator positions, and at least one minority candidate from outside the organization uh, for general managers, senior football ops. Uh, also, um, for team presidents, you see they have to include uh, minorities and or female applicants. It was interesting, Jeff, looking at the comments surrounding this because uh, football operations czar Troy Vincent said, the facts are we have a broken system and the fight continues. And Commissioner Roger Goodell said, we are not satisfied with where we are. So they're trying to make a, a little bit more of a, a play on this. They can only set up the interviews, though. The hiring still has to be done, right, by the owners. They can't install people into those jobs. No, and, and I think the and I this is one, Neil, that's very, very, very politically charged, right? And it has been for a long time. And I think, frankly, I think the NFL looks at it from the wrong vantage point. And if if there is a lack of a minority pool for them and they want minority hires, then instead of looking at the top layer, I'm talking about the NFL and interviewing for head coaches and coordinator positions, they have to go down further and further. And this, this has to start with education and preparing these guys for opportunities to be head coaches. And that means there's, you know, again, there have been a few guys that are, that are different. Sean McVay is a different guy. He gets a job really that he's been in coaching maybe five years and he's head coach of the Rams, but he's a different animal. Typically it's a long process. You slog through a, you know, your graduate assistant then your position coach then your coordinator and then your, you know, head coach. They have to improve it from the bottom up, not from the top down. Cause when you look, when you look at it from a top, from the top down, really what you you're trying to address a situation right now that you should have addressed really 30 years ago or 20 years ago. And we would have a different, you know, we'd have a different situation. Now, again, remember that the owners own the teams and it's their, that's their right to hire whoever they want to hire. Right. And again, you hope it's the most qualified person, but obviously, you know, it, it's, it's, it's something that I think the NFL knows is not right. And they know it's broken as Troy Vincent said, but in my opinion, I think they're trying to fix the top, layer when they've got to go down and help these young guys get started, fast track them along, help them in their growth. And I know they've done some of it, but it was interesting to me that both Anthony Lynn and Tony Dungy, two African-American head coaches, and uh, Brandon London, who's a player who played for me at, at, and played for the Giants and is now working in Giants media, uh, his father's uh, African-American head coach at William & Mary, and they all came out and said, what are we thinking? We have to bribe the we have to bribe the teams to hire minority coaches. That's mm. that devalues the minority coach when you do that. And that's I think it's the they're trying to get the thing fixed, but they got to be careful about how they fix it. Yeah. So only three African American head coaches in the NFL at the moment: Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Brian Flores of the Miami Dolphins, and Anthony Lynn of the Chargers, as Jeff alluded to. So Jeff, a lot of a lot of white head coaches, and then the entry level positions go to a lot of their kids. So you're right. I mean, it's you want to start it from the bottom yeah. up, right? <laughs> right. And I think that's another thing they need to address. And I understand, you know, there are nepotism laws in the United States where you, know, you just can't hire your child just because he's your child. And, you know, for a lot of the young sons of, you know, like, for example, I will tell you, you know, I know this for a fact. There's a defensive coordinator in the league that when he gets hired, the understanding is that you're going to hire his son, too. And that's just the yep. way it is now. Is that right? I don't, not in my world, it's not. But again, the reality of it is that's the way he, that's the bargain. That's the bargain you got to, you got to, you know, yeah. you got to buy into. I, you know, so I think there are a number of things that need to get fixed with this thing. And and I really, really believe that, that, that if they really want to change it and if they want to make it better, then you just have to increase the pool. And I know they've tried. I know they've, you know, the, the Bill Walsh uh, fellowships that in the summer mm -hmm. where minority, uh, young minority coaches can go to training camp with clubs. Th 
those things have helped. They certainly have helped. Thomas McGahee, who's the special teams coach with the, with the Giants, got into the NFL that way. And NFL Europe, frankly, when we had NFL Europe, was another avenue where they could develop young African-American coaches. But we don't have that anymore, so they've got to come up with another way. And I think they maybe need to go down even further, Neil, and incentivize the colleges mm. to, to, you know, to not only fast track their African-American coaches, but you know, to improve the, the uh, level of education that they get and the, their experience. And, and it's coming with women too, Neil, you know, as, as the women now start to fight for their right, you see now uh, they're talking about front office jobs, but they're starting to be women in the coaching round ranks now. And I think that's good. I, they should be diversity in, in coaching.